Hello everyone. I am going to make a presentation on safety system and this topic will be on safety architecture. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Safety architecture. What is safety architecture in SIS? Yes, SIS is engineer perform specific control functions to fail safe or maintain safe operation of a process when an unacceptable or dangerous conditions occur. As we have seen in the earlier presentations and uh, safety system is not always in action, it is always in silent mode, but it is ready to perform whenever any, any hazardous condition arises and any demand arises for the, uh, for the system to function to take a uh, uh, to prevent your action to overcome from any hazards, the safety system comes into picture. Safety instrumented system must be independent from all other control systems that control the same equipment in order to ensure SIS functionality is not compromised. In the normal plant, you can see, see the, the BPC, BPC system is the one controlling the normal process of the plant. The safety system is sitting in the next layer. We have seen about the independent protection layers and all in earlier presentations. So, this comes into picture whenever any hazardous conditions arises. So, meaning that it is acting independently and the equipment protection is ensured. SIS is composed of control elements including sensors, logic solvers, sensors, logic solvers and final control elements. These are the three major components. The specific control functions performed by an SIS is called safety instrumented function. Uh, we have seen about the LOPA in earlier uh, presentations. In the LOPA, there are many scenarios being worked out by the process safety experts, plant experts during the initial engineering phase and design phase. They find out and uh, tablet different type of hazards that can happen across the plant in the process areas and for each of the scenario for example if it is a boiler the fuel gas or fuel oil entering into the boiler can get into high pressure and create a fire inside the boiler or it may be getting external to external to the boiler uh, furnace also and this is one scenario likewise it can go to low pressure also or low flow also. This will be another scenario for the same boiler, for the same equipment, there may be multiple scenarios as well. And a set of control valves and uh, automated on-off valves which are in the in a particular uh, gas line or pipeline, they may be functioning to make the protection against any, any hazard. This is why it is called a safety instrumented system. In SIF, the architecture is decided by the failure tolerance of its components. It may reach a higher sill level during redundancy. Uh, we have seen about the redundancy and our uh, voting principle in the earlier presentations. There are uh, different combinations by which the redundancy can be achieved and it is all depending upon the safety integrity level. Okay, these are all also different uh, uh, types of modules, the uh, control modules in the logic solver. And the final element, this is one type of valve, this is known as butterfly valve. And this is a sensor which is taking the process measurement. It can be a flow, pressure, or temperature. We will discuss about it here. Uh, sensor, what is sensor? It is an instrument that measures process conditions. Sensor devices that measure flow, temperature, pressure, liquid level, etc. Also, not only this, this is the one sensor what we are talking. Not only this, analytical instruments such as gas chromatographs, oxygen, CO2 analysis, gas detectors also can be a part of the safe instrument system sensor. And also flame de detectors in boiler or furnace and electrical power or current sensors are also used as a sensor. So, these are all the electrical components. They are sitting in the switch gear and giving the signal about the power or electric current going into the motor, turbine, 
or any other equipment like extruder are so many equipments in the plant so uh, likewise not only the uh, pressure flow and all the gas chromatographs in the process industries where the many chemicals are being split to do different processes inside the uh, inside the plant the there may be the components required to see the gas composition these are almost gas chromatographs this is widely used in the refineries as well as in petrochemical plants okay logic solver it is an intelligent microprocessor based controller device this is the one what we are talking that performs logic functions to convert the sensor input into an action command to be carried out by the final limit here this is the logic solver what we are talking of it is getting an information or process condition through the sensor this is the one in installed in the field and this may be mostly in the control room satellite control room in an air conditioned atmosphere and dust free and weather proof shelter and this is the final again this will be in the process uh, so here i can show an example see for example this is on reactor which is having a temperature measurement pressure measurement and uh, it is having both system shown with the both systems here because here if you see this pressure transmitter is going to the safety instrumented system and the second pressure transmitter it is connected to the basic process control system in the normal plant operation the basic process control system is the one controlling the process so this operates the valve control valve is level control valve and maintains the level inside the vessel in case the control valve gets failed or any card for from the control process process control system get, get get failed that could be a chance that the control valve may not be able to do the control action and keep on adding the fluid and by the when the fluid get excess in the inside the vessel thereby the pressure also gets excess and uh, it get and the pressure sensor here in the safety system senses and uh, gives an gives a signal into the safety instrument system and thereby the safety instrument system the logics built, built inside the logic solver will do the necessary action and take and give the command to close this shutdown valve so the shutdown valve will get shut so that the liquid entry into the uh, this reactor will get minimized or will get controlled so whenever this is coming into line if you see this is all this pressure transmitter this safety instrument system logic solver and then the valve these are all acting independently that's why it's known as independent protection layer okay and final limit this is an equipment which performs the physical action commanded by the logic solver final limit devices may be control valves like earlier said can be a motor or switch gear the motor operation also need to be stopped for example one pump is uh, supplying fluid for this particular tank whatever we are uh, talking of that pump needs to be stopped in order to cut the liquid to the tank so uh, for the motor the, there are switch gears which is having, having the breakers and other components inside that needs to be controlled and switched off this can also be part of the safety instrument system so this slide we have explained about uh, it earlier sensor is there and it is going to the logic solver the signal and signal for further the process signal goes to the final element to take an action to shut off the process this is it also depicted in a different way this is a, uh, this is a sensor giving signal to the uh, controller which is logic solver and it is going the output from the controller is going to the valve which is a, in this case it's a butterfly valve so it is this is depicted in a different way over here so the this is a plant process you can just assume this is a plant process which is having different sensors and different actuators so the bpcs stands for basic process control system this control and recovery of the process due to non critical fault actually then in the normal operation the plant is uh, under control by the bpcs so in case of any alarm like if each after the sensor there could be an alarm also suppose it is going to measure 0 to 10 meters in a vessel at 7.5 meters it will give an high alarm so that it takes a preventive measure in order to not exit the level touch the limit to, so it will give an alarm so further to the alarm the operator sometimes it may be required for the operator to, to take an action to 
control or manual wall to close the manual wall further to it if there is a failure or the manual wall does not work properly due to uh, any reason x y z reasons then it goes to the next level switch next level transmitter whatever it is which can give you a signal it, it will be a safety, safety type sensors and this can give you a signal to the safety instrumented system and by that the safety instrumented system it, it has a programmed logic built inside during the engineering stage of the project so this will give a command to close the safety actuator so this is a hazardous when i see it's shown in red so this is a hazardous situation when wherein the safety instrument system is acting to close the actuator so that's why degeneration of process in a controlled way due to a criti critical fault critical fault means already the level has reached to the very high level then the level of the process what we are talking in our example is reached to the very high level so in order to prevent the uh, equipment here it is pressure it can be level also so uh, in order to prevent the process to a safe and uh, to going from any further hazard and uh, go to the safe state safe state this uh, safety instrument system will act and then close the valve okay this is a, in a this is like a pndd a small part of pndd of the project wherein we explained about it earlier the auction okay we are seeing in a different pictorial way only all are referring to the same type of reactor which is having a pressure measurement pt is pressure transmitter tt transfer temperature transmitter again another tt transfer temperature transmitter it is going to the bpcs it is basic process control system and it is going to the input uh, output card from the output card the, the signal is going back to the control valve to do the pressure control of this process and similarly we have another set of pressure trans transmitter pressure transmitter going and temperature transmitter which is going to the uh, input output model of the safety instrument instrument system this is a different system altogether different processor because the safety instrument system requires a very high level of testing proofing everything so it uh, the processor itself may be different should be different which, which is having a high capacity high processing speed and other capacity and like it, it could be a redundant processor here it is just shown as a simple way in a simple like a single processor but it could be a redundant processor or triple modular redundant there will be three processors together doing the similar functions in case one fails the second processor takes over in case two fails the third one which is which is take over and uh, it will can still control the it is still able to take the action but it is not safe to run with a single processor in, in case of triple modular redundant so there are other safety requirements for the uh, functionality of the logic solver okay and this will in again in this case this transmitters will uh, give a signal to the safety instrumented system and thereby after uh, performing the logic the output will go to the valves to shut off the process okay again this is in a different way we are only the see we see all the components which are shown in different uh, presentation slides are almost similar only they are showing in a different way for the better understanding of the students again this is a process piping wherein the sen sensor is do doing the pressure measurement sensing and it is going to the card the io card from the io card the logic solver processor will be doing the pro uh, processing function and give a command to close the actuate close the valve okay so far we have been seeing about the sensor logic solver and actuator this final control element actually this is a small part of the sub part of the process and as a whole if you see the plant will have different numbers of because it may be thousand maybe in thousand based on the plant size and the capacity and the like a refining unit crude unit so many units will be there inside the big plants there will be so many valves and uh, sensors so they may be connected in a different uh, pattern and giving signal to the uh, basic process control system or uh, distributed control system also distributed control system and they are connected to the because whatever the process is doing here they need to get to know the to the operations the human interface station is the one where the operators is sitting in a control room and they watch the process how it is behaving 
and they control and do the any action auto normally the process is running in an automated way but if there is any abnormality happening the process may go to the high level or low level or high temperature as per the design state so whenever there is such cases they need to take an action so that's why this human interface station is the one where the operators are sitting and doing the control and engineering station here the engineering engineers plant automation engineers instrumentation engineers who are responsible for the particular plant they will be doing the engineering functions they will be doing the building the logics and in case, sometimes it may be required to change the logics or bypass the logics for operating an equipment or something like this the so the engineering station people engine engineers maintenance engineers and maintenance supervisors technicians they will be sitting and doing the engineering activities using the engineering station and plant asset management this is for gathering the very critical parameters from the plant and then reporting to the uh, higher level management or this is okay plant asset management is the one which is uh, having the plant asset data and giving the performance reports about the different process different equipments uh, maybe it could be like all high capacity equipments like boiler some critical vessels like this etc and plant information management this is again an important uh, server based machine and it is having multiple clients in the different uh, head of the departments like plant vp or plant directors offices and they will be getting the high level parameters like what is the uh, what is the production as on date what is the incoming supply from the from an adjacent plant what is the recovery happened on how much is the sea water consumed how much is the cooling water consumed what is the air consumption like that different critical parameters they need to know so these are collected using the plant information management server and reported to the high level management uh, similar to this uh, dcs plant dcs uh, control station uh, this is control cards and other things we are having safety instrumented system uh, processors sensors on off valves etc okay and all of them are connected through a plant control network this is known as plant control network we can see it's more clearly in the next picture here this is a showing a more detailed and elaborate view of particular uh, system this is i think for the ekogawa control system uh, each when the manufacturers they are having a different topology a different uh, naming architecture but overall if you see the functionality will be uh, almost similar only there may be some generating changes from bit, between one manufacturer to the other manufacturer uh, here we are looking on a larger scale of detailed uh, plan network by ekogawa control system and we are seeing all the sensors valves are all connected this is field bus is another technology it will be like a single cable uh, supporting about eight instruments and uh, it's not like other normal transmitters this is a different on, on different technology wherein the cable requirement will be minimized and uh, this is different one wherein the conventional cabling is there for each piece of sensor each piece of uh, valves there will be separate uh, wiring independent wiring going from the control room right from the control room up to the instrument so here we have the cards and all that is connected to the io modules and it which is in turn connected to the Uh, control system fcs stands for the field control station and uh, scs stands for the safety control stations this is for the uh, plant uh, ppcs control and this is for the safety control and again this uh, safety control also having different kinds of uh, sensors uh, valves etc connected through input output modules to the respective safety control system sensor and fio stands for the field io this is another type of uh, io wherein just field inputs are being collected through a uh, distributed uh, input output uh, card which may be located in the plant area in an in, uh, in a safe uh, enclosure this is known as nemo like that some different enclosures are there wherein the safety cards or control cards can be placed and it will be maintained and under, under a temperature because in many plants in different locations the high temperature like in asia asian region the temperatures are normally high maybe 40 50 and above 
and in uh, colder places like in american continent canada and all normally the temperatures used to lie in 15 degree 20 degree and sometime in the winter time it goes to sub zero temperatures so um, the cots and other things need to be maintained in a constant temperature like it may be your uh, functioning in a good manner between 15 to 50 degree so they have to be maintained normally it, it is maintained in that in such a way like conditioned environment so if FIO means the field input output cards, it can be sitting in a plant area and then connected to through a cabling to the safety control system. Okay. And uh, like we saw in the earlier slide, here it is a human interface station is there for the operation action. And automation design suite, uh, that engineering suite, SC engineering is this is an engineering suite, uh, engineering application, engineering um, application. Uh, laptop or PC and PRM is for the plant resource management so it is doing scheduling and other different actions and they are all networked and connected through an internet cabling further it, it can be connected to a plant information manager network to give a data to the higher level management okay we have seen two different type of one brief architecture and one detail of architecture by the specific vendor okay we will go through the uh, topic. What is safety architecture in SIS? The number of pieces of equipment will depend on the reliability of each component defined in its FMEDA. FMEDA stands for failure modes, effect and diagnostic analysis. As explained in an earlier presentation, these are all the detailed terminologies and uh, which uh, the students need to learn when they go into the uh, detailed technical training course. Uh, as we are just doing an overall uh, presentation, we are not getting into deep into the details. Okay, and uh, the common voting principles in the SIS architecture are simplex voting or one out of one, which we discussed in an earlier presentation, or duplex voting, which is which can be one out of two or two out of two, and uh, triplex voting, which is two out of three. There will be See, like uh, we are seeing here, for an example, you are seeing only one sensor. In such case, if it is one out of two means, two means, it can be two sensors here. Like we are seeing two different sensors, right? This can be in a one out of two combination because anyone showing the higher pressure can give a signal for the uh, safety system controller to work. Okay. This is known as a voting uh, terminology. And sometimes it may be three sensors out of which two, if it is going high, uh, it can cause for a safe shutdown. Okay. Okay. And we'll go over the architectural design requirements. Safety system applications are designed to protect the plant and personnel from hazardous conditions and provide a rapid and coordinated operational response to emergency situations. Hence, they have to be engineered carefully. Time and again, we are say, looking into the criticality of the plant because the plant is more important to do the production, correct? That, that's why only people are getting jobs and getting uh, salaries, etc. As well as the plant and personal need to be protected. If there is any hazardous condition happening because hydrocarbon based plants and all, they are prone for hazards. Any time fire can catch up easily and uh, some equipment can um, failure may lead to production loss etc at any point of time the management is considering the safety should consider the safety of the personnel as well as the plant equipment so that's why safety instrumental systems are in place under sys uh, under sys architecture modern sys systems takes into account to check the reliability of the entire safety loop Evaluate measurement system performance and extend diagnostics beyond this device to provide process diagnostics. Meaning, the older systems were not much intelligent, and the newer system, which have been developed after 90s and 2000s, they are more intelligent, which can do the diagnostic performance diagnostics and predict the failures, if any, in advance. Okay. Whenever the engineering takes place and the uh, equipment order takes place, the respective uh, engineer involved in the plant need to order the equipment as per the plant requirement. This architecture to take an into account 
devices predicted lifespan and determine life cycle with maintenance notification and device alerts as applicable to ensure sys integrity stays stable longer as we told the integrity of the equipment is very important so um, the architecture whenever it is being built like one out of two two, two out of three and all they are all arrived based on certain calculations so after, even after the calculations the person who are doing the who are involved in the design not only one person maybe group of engineers group of uh, technical personnel ex experts they need to design in a such a way that the integrity of the plant is ensured safety integrity of the plant is ensured and also the number of years the plant is going to be serving number of years the equipment is going to be in service that also need to be taken into account okay safety systems to meet required architectural requirements by approved manufacturers because there are multiple manufacturers for the same product but everyone cannot uh, supply the safety inst system instruments so there are certifying agencies and uh, those certified agencies only can give the approval for manufacturers they, and after the, the manufacturers products will be uh, tested they will be going for a rigorous testing after that the approval will be given so the plant owners need to take and uh, put the equipments which are having the approval sys system architecture to take a modern approach to increase safety integrity while improving the process availability this is what uh, the architecture should be made in such a way that they had to see the integrity of the plant always and process availability because they doesn't mean that to put four transmitters five transmitters and keep plant in running always same uh, we have to go for the required number of sensors and uh, final limits and the reliability and process availability all the times also need to be ensured the logic solver certified to safety integrity level 3 shall use an electronic marshalling technology as far as possible to reduce maintenance costs because we saw in the earlier presentation this is known as marshalling cabinets this is shown in the network drawing but it will be this will be a marshalling cabinet so that has to be electronic there are still levels different still levels and it is a still three or more still three it has to be in electronic marshalling but it is uh, being used in even still loan applications as well this is as a minimum requirement design requirements being discussed better configurations enables to start hardware design earlier in the engineering process together with ASOP's completion uh, as uh, some students would have gone through the earlier presentations ASOP is uh, for hazardous operability conditions so whenever the plant is uh, being built hydrocarbon and uh, facilities are being built or before that prior to that that study will be taken up as well as operability study will be taken up and then the different hazard conditions would be analyzed based on which the lower layer of protection analysis will be developed and the number of sensors the safety integrity level categorization everything will be decided accordingly so in the earlier stage it has to be taken so that the hardware design can be done perfectly so, uh, along with the as of completion so these are all the different uh, requirements should be considered in the design stage for the better architectural arrangements of the safety instrumented system thank you for watching the video